What is evolution? Many people think it's a complicated and difficult thing, but it isn't. It's extremely simple. Um, it's, Darwin defined it in three words, descent with modification. Descent, information passed from one generation to the next. Modification, the statement that that passage is imperfect, that mistakes or mutations are made, and these errors build up. And there's a second process, natural selection, which means that evolution is a series of successful mistakes. But the fundamental nature of evolution is just genetics plus time in biological terms or descent with modification. And the first realization that that was true uh, refers to another biblical story, which is the Tower of Babel. Here we have the Tower of Babel. It's on the other side of Eden compared to a Nod. There's the Tower of Babel. Follow the arrows. There it is. Okay. And the Tower of Babel, of course, was the explanation of the world's languages. And it's worth remembering that until really quite recently, uh, the universal supposition uh, that explained the great diversity of languages across the world was a creationist one. They sprang into being at, at heaven's command um, when, uh, when arrogant man did something very uh, unwise, which was to build, start to build this thing, the Tower of Babel. Okay? And the, those of you who are familiar, as I'm sure you all are, with the story of the Tower of Babel, will know that it was done in order to reach heaven. Uh, they, the hope was if you built it tall enough, you could climb up the Tower of Babel and enter in by going in the back door rather than through the pearly gates. Okay. Well, God, who was a bit of a nimby, as you can imagine, <laughs> not in my backyard, thank you very much, was infuriated by this, so he thought to himself, uh, I shall put a stop to this process and the way I will do it is that now everybody speaks the same language so they can cooperate to build the Tower of Abel. Instead I will cast down upon them the great plague of different languages so that all the bricklayers were Polish, all the plumbers, <laughs> all the plumbers were Welsh, um, all, the, uh, all the electricians were Chinese and of course they couldn't talk to each other so the Tower of Babel never got built. Okay. But there's an irony here because actually language itself was the first scientific statement of the existence of the process of evolution. And that was due to a chap called William Jones um, who was a, a schoolboy in the 18th century. He didn't have the immeasurable advantage of going to Eton, which of course makes you more or less a, a natural born leader, but he did go to Harrow. And you know, Churchill went to Harrow, so it can't be that bad. He was a natural born leader. Um, and at Harrow, he learned, as all students at both Eton and Harrow in those days, and of course in these days too, they all learned to speak fluent Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. Uh, which he excelled, and he also discovered himself to be, while he was very young, a quite remarkable linguist. He learned effectively all the European languages by the time he was in his 20s. And in his 20s, he was sent to India as a merchant um, and uh, began to learn Indian languages too. And he was startled to find that there were some similarities between these languages. Um, what you can see here, and these are similarities are now to us very obvious, but English, Latin, and Greek, the numbers for two are two, duo, and duo. Sanskrit is an extinct language of northern India, but which has left a considerable literature behind, so we do know uh, what it consisted of. And uh, uh, William Jones, in fact, called it the most beautiful language he knew, the most logical and beautiful language he knew. And it was clear that these words are rather similar. Now, he th William Jones thought to himself, this must mean that these words are related. And what do we mean when we say somebody is related to somebody else? We mean, obviously, that they descend from a shared ancestor. And Jones drew the first ever evolutionary tree, which is the evolutionary tree of words. Uh, the word father in the Romance languages, padre, padre, per, and so on, in the modern languages, they do all descend from the Latin pater, and if you go back 2,000 years or so, at the time when Latin was the, ling the lingua franca, literally, um, you would find the classical Greek at about the same time was pater, Sanskrit is Peter, Gothic, which became German, um, is Fadar, and so on. Okay. And so he drew this tree and he went one step further and began to speculate that one day it might be possible to reconstitute the extinct word um, which came before Latin, Greek, and Sanskrit, uh, which was the word for father in a language which we now call Pi, for Proto-Indo-European. Okay? And people have reconstituted that, languages, that language. Uh, really in detail, you can go to conferences where people speak Pi to each other, rather than throwing Pi at each other. Um, and it's been 
it's been mapped across, the languages have been mapped across the world. And the suggestion is, and the suggestion is, uh, I think, a very convincing one, is that Pi, Proto-Indo-European, was the language of the first farmers. Okay. Um, and if you draw a map of uh, the way it looks, this is the way it looks now, uh, here we have uh, a, a timeline going from about 8,000 years ago uh, to a language uh, where one of the oldest is a language called Anatolian, which lives here, okay? Um, and another one which is pretty old called Tocharian, which is there. Um, and then we have languages like the, uh, it, uh, like the um, uh, Indo-Iranian languages here, languages, uh, the Balto uh, so European languages over here, ending up by the most degenerate language of all, which is my own native language, which is Welsh, the Celtic languages, um, which are at the far end of Europe. And this suggestion was that as the farmers spread out, and there was a point, we'll see in a moment, there's a population explosion with farming, as the farmers spread out, um, they began to move away from the centre where they had originated, taking their languages with them. And they taught their children their languages, and of course they taught them inaccurately. And you could hear language changing in one's, in one's own lifetime. When I was first at UCL, as I say to my young colleagues who have just joined UCL, I said, don't worry, the first 43 years are the worst, and I've been there for 43 years. Uh, and when I got there in 1972, most of the students spoke rather like this. They spoke a very clear, direct English, uh, which rather overwhelmed me, coming from a fairly peasant-ridden peasant, uh, 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 background. But now my, I've just been teaching to die, and somebody came up to me and he said, yeah, do I have to go to this tutorial, or is it not compulsory? Is it online then? Um, and, that's, and they all speak like that, right? <laughs> um, and, uh, and, uh, and what that shows you is a change, quite a striking change, in language over a very short time. And if that were to go on for 100 or 200 years, I very soon would have no idea what the students are talking about. And to be frank, the process has gone uh, quite a long way towards its completion even now. All right. So and it's much more than a coincidence that the pattern of uh, relatedness of the languages is the pattern um, of movement across Europe and across India um, to in, uh, in, in, at the origin of farming. This one here, Tokeri, oh, bugger. This one here, Tocharian, come here. It's fascinating. This is in, in, uh, in, uh, nor in the deserts of northern China. And it seems remarkable that China, one of the Chinese languages, an extinct language, but one of the Chinese languages was a European language, a member of the European family. And it was discovered, manuscripts were discovered about 20 or 30 years ago, and they've been deciphered by linguist linguists. And here we have those words again, English for two, uh, uh, in Tocharian, it's wu and we, but that's easy. T to W is quite a common shift. Uh, and then we've got duo and dva. Four is stuar in Tocharian. Pedwar in Welsh, okay. Five is pan, uh, pancha in Sanskrit. So the evidence is good that even these languages even got into China.